you cannot do a fixed commission if you're not going to give the stylist the freedom and responsibility of managing their own price point. Mm-hmm. Hi, everyone. I'm Sid Sharice. And I'm David Bosher. And you're listening to Destroy the Hairdresser, where we teach you to salon differently. By now, our listeners know that we recommend that salons go cashless. And with Aura Salonware, you can now accept only the payments you want. Aura Salonware is an integrated point of sale that accepts both card present and card not present payments. That means cards can be kept on file and clients can use Express Pay to get through checkout in seconds. We also coach salons to go gratuity free. And Aura allows you to hide the gratuity line for those using this method of business. With Aura Salonware, you can future-proof your salon with technology. If you are interested in this type of profit maximization, visit aurasalonware.com slash DTH to receive special discounts and promos. Color inventory doesn't have to be so painful. There's finally a solution, and that solution is Salon Scale. We have partnered with Salon Scale to make this process more streamlined and simple. The Salon Scale app will keep track of all of your color used down to the last drop, and it'll give you a suggested color order list whenever you need it. No more under-ordering and no more over-ordering. Visit salonscale.com slash DTH and use code DTH10 at checkout for 10% off. When people get older, do you, like, I am in my 30s and I feel stiff and hard as a rock. Like, I can't, my back hurts. I can't, like, function properly in the world anymore. But then I, like, see people, like, in their 50s and 60s that are, like, thriving. I don't feel that way at all. Okay, well, never mind. (laughs) So. (laughs) I wake up. I feel great. My body. So didn't I have very different wake up? Doesn't ache like I thought. I mean, sometimes. Are you serious? It, it sometimes does if I work out too hard, but like I literally not on wake, the daily. I wake up every day and wonder if my back is going to go out. I also stretch a lot and I move a lot. Oh, you do? <laughs> you do. Cool. No, I like feel. You just get up and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Sid and I wake up very differently. I don't. And Sid wakes up, the alarm goes off, and she just gets out of bed and walks to wherever she's going. Like, it's as if, it's like a zombie waking up. Like, like a mummy has woken up and is just like walking. You just go right to where you're going. Yeah, my wife sleeps like you too. So like I have learned to adapt now because I have lived with you before, which was training for my marriage. Yeah. And now I know like, okay, if I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. and go to the gym... I have to act as if I wake her up, I'm going to get killed. Yeah. So I practice rolling out and standing up and trying not to make any... I have everything prepped so I can just get dressed in the other room I and have run to out. wake up very gradually. <laughs> I so know. Like I tried my... to talk to you this morning and you went... <laughs> <laughs> like I have to slowly... Like I have... My alarm usually goes off. I, I prefer to wake up to the sun. Like if I like a bright room. <gasps> yes. Um, Like I'll slowly wake up. I do love that. And then I kind of like open my eyes and then I kind of go back to sleep a little bit and then I kind of wake back up and then my dogs usually come and cuddle me and then I wake up and then I get up to go to the shower. The, like I have to, it's very slow. Yeah. Speak- you know, but never actually talked to anybody else like in masses about how they wake up. I just know how the people close to me wake up. But I'm yeah. wondering if this is normal, like if anybody else functions like that. Oh, well, I think there's only two camps. It's you wake up like me or you wake up like you. Yeah, like you wake up and you're awake or you slowly wake up and like, it takes a couple hours. Like, I don't need coffee for the caffeine. I need coffee for the morning routine. No, I need coffee, like... The taste of it. To, like, I don't even have enough coffee yet, and it's <laughs> a, it's noon. <laughs> Speaking of waking up gradually... Let's talk about gradual. Let's talk about gradual. <laughs> gradually making more money. <laughs> yeah. we Sid and I have very strong opinions about... Uh, uh, we do? Strong opinions? You and I, strong opinions? No. Not, never heard of it. <laughs> Never would have thought. (laughs) But we have really strong opinions about salons that do sliding scales. Oh, it's a scam. Sliding scale commissions. Yeah. Okay. So if you own a commission salon, there's this thing that commission salons do that they'll say, oh, you know, if you make more money, we will provide more, we'll give you more commission based Mm -hmm. on the money that you make. But what's so funny is that it doesn't actually benefit anybody. It doesn't benefit the salon owner or the stylist because exactly. that small percentage that you make, like let's say you make 2% more of $1,000 is $2. Mm-hmm. Right? Am I doing the math right? No. 2% oh, 2% of $1,000 of is $2. Can someone fact check me in the studio? 
It's a thousand dollars. It's two percent of a thousand dollars. Two dollars. Checking one second. Oh wait, we have we are getting confirmation. <laughs> Everyone listening is like these fucking idiots. I know. Listen, I can't do math in my head. People on the live are probably <laughs> like, it's two dollars. It has to be two billion dollars. A thousand of a thousand. Yeah, of twenty dollars. No. Um, Google says twenty. Oh, twenty dollars. Yeah. Oh my I thought God. That, but I just wanted to see. I just lost all my credibility. Should we cut that out? Nope. <laughs> so, so $20. Okay. So you made $20 more that week yeah. in your commission due to the sliding scale pay structure. But there, the week before. Yeah. There's no benefit. Like, I would rather you charge more money and make a flat rate. So, those sliding scale commissions, they don't really bring you a ton of money. Mm-hmm. They're, and they make payroll more complicated. They make, they're not a selling point. It, it's more it's also a rat race. Like it's exhausting. I remember yeah. working for a sledding scale salon, and I'm constantly. First off, at that time, I I didn't really grasp how it worked behind the scenes because I had an owner that was not transparent on how payroll works. So, and like what the money that I was bringing in as a stylist went to, I had no idea. So obviously, like a lot of hairdressers, I just thought they're keeping all my money and trying to pay me very little, which is not the reality at all um, within the salon. Like, I promise you. I, we, I can guarantee you that 90% of the salon, that's a real statistic, <laughs> that 90% of salons out there are really not trying to screw over their stylists. They're, they're really not. There are some. It, the but screw I think the over much- happens from not understanding their numbers, not yeah. having proper support, not like having an accountant. Two percent of a thousand is two dollars. Overspending, <laughs> over giving commissions because they're setting oh, a number yeah. based on what the the industry is setting. Like a lot of owners are like, "Yeah, I'll give you fifty percent. I'll give you sixty well, percent." There's and no industry standard, really. No, that's, it's everyone just. It's a big free for all. It's a shit show. But tell, so you worked for this. So Come that's on. what happened. I I basically was str- I was striving to hit those higher numbers weekly so that I could make more money. Yeah. And I was absolutely exhausted when in reality if I would just raise my prices and work consistently, I yep. would have made the same as if I hit if those big more. numbers, if not more. Yeah. I I once actually had a student that I worked with and her sliding scale was created by an accountant who that has never worked in our industry. Oh, this and is And he I've just made this. it up. And it was to be unachievable. So the selling that's, point that's when being hired, the offer was that at this point, when you get to this point in your career, you can make X amount of money. And the reality is, is they set it up to it and never be possible. And I asked them, like, has anybody like, because, you know, things can be broken. Has anybody actually achieved it? And she was like, not one person, not even me. And she was the highest, as the owner and educator, she was the top seller in the or top provider in the salon. The other thing I see in the salons that are a little bit more abusive is they'll use, like you said, they'll either make it unachievable or they'll use it as an excuse to give you a really low commission mm-hmm. in the in the beginning. You're a beginner. So you're at you're 40%. New, so we have to start small. Yeah. Which logically I can say I understand the logic there. Yes. Um, but... On paper... On paper, I understand. The math, I understand. Yeah. But the the way that that affects a hairdresser and how they're building their career is a little bit detrimental. You're making you're charging less and you're making less. It's like it's you're you're almost making it impossible for new stylists to build, mm-hmm. right? And to and not only that to make money. Yeah. And I we I think there's this hangover from the industry of like, well, I didn't make money when I was new. Yeah. So like so there's this like you have to pay your dues too. We've talked about this in other episodes of like going back into this vicious cycle of like, well, I didn't make money when I first started, so you can't make money when you first started. Yeah. And that has to shift because reality is the owner that's saying that is basically out of pride and ego, hindering not only their own personal business, their the business in itself that is holding the walls up for spaces or for stylists to have a job, but they're also hurting the stylist. Yeah. It, it's like shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. You know, and it, I we've said it before and I say all the time, building a business at fifty dollars an hour is the same as building a business at a hundred dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. But what has to change is who you're marketing to. Exactly. So you don't necessarily have nothing to, in the logistics changes. You're still talking about your yeah. services the same. You're still it's just who you're talking putting to. it out. It's just who you're talking to. Like your market has to change. And as you build that price point, 
you know, it's going, you're putting yourself in a different financial bracket. So I think for people out there that are saying, well, if I don't offer a sliding scale, which again, you can, it's just that we don't. Your business, do you? <laughs> yeah, we just don't recommend it. it. It's confusing for the hairdresser. It's more work for uh, for the salon owner. It's not a big enough incentive. It, it It's a little bit of a burnout causer. Yeah. And then what really, what really is going to backfire is when you have people that aren't able to achieve the the sliding scale structure that you have, and then they start to resent you. Yep. And it is on because you because they feel like it's never. They're never going to. You've set this bar in their career that this is where they're supposed to be to be top successful. Yeah. When the reality is, is they're already successful. Their, you know, their retention or could be through the roof. They're not incentivized by that. Exactly. A lot of people aren't. A I'm lot not. of millennials and Gen Z are not incentivized by those kind of systems. Right. What entices them, what attracts them to a business is having a business that is fair, having a business that can provide them long-term growth and wealth, that is in society doing good things that with community culture, like they're changing the world in the sense. And even if the world is a small community, it's a big moment. And I think that's the missing piece that salon owners are missing is that they're they also, not and they going want after freedom. them. And they want freedom. And when you do sliding scales, I know that it can feel like, well, I'm giving them freedom by, you know, having this system where they can make more money, but it's not really making more money. So what we suggest at Destroy the Hairdresser, which I don't think we've actually publicly talked about. Yes, we have. Not that much. Not as much as, you know, other methods that we teach. Yeah. But in the program, I mean, this Oh, yeah, is... in the program, yeah. But um, when you are opening a salon or setting up your structures, or even if you have a salon now and you're interested in changing your commission structure, we recommend making it simple, clear, and very fair. And the way that we recommend that is by offering a flat commission... Mm-hmm. With and giving the hairdresser total freedom to raise their prices or choose their pricing. Again, we always coach to hourly pricing. Well, I want to talk about that a little bit more of a flat commission. We obviously have a, a specific commission that we actually go in depth in our program and talk about. You can tell now. The uh, so we say forty eight percent. Yep, that's the that's the goal. Some people start lower than that. But that's I, yeah, the goal. exactly. Because well, let me go back to my original statement. We say 48%. Like start everybody at 48%, bam, it's flat. Because what happens is when you have that sliding scale and you have someone, I've seen salons start as low as 20% before. And I've also worked with salons that were given away 75% commission, which is a whole different conversation, um, which was great for the stylist. (laughs) Salon was not doing well. Uh, (laughs) I wonder why. (laughs) I wonder why. (laughs) But the reality is that what happens is especially if you don't have support, if the stylists don't have support, they're not being coached within their business. They're not being, you know, encouraged. They're always, when they want to make more money, they're going to come to the salon and say, I want to hire a commission. And what this flat rate does is, yes, we're going to start you off here, but in order for all of us to make more money, we have to continue raising prices. And it's so funny to me when everyone internally in the business thinks that in order for you to make more money, that the business has to pay for it. When the clients that are bringing the money in should be the one that pays for this growth. We are proud to introduce you to Hair Story. Hair Story is known for their clean and safe ingredients, but did you know that they have one of the best affiliate programs on the market? You can earn 25% on all sales when your clients use your custom Hair Story link. Plus receive money on your purchases made by hairdressers you refer. For clients, they will receive 15% off their first purchase using your link. Need back bar? No problem. As a Hair Story Pro, you will unlock generous back bar pricing. Ready to try New Wash for free? Visit hairstory.com slash DTH to get pro access today. I was talking to someone that said, you know, they didn't think commission was a fair... It hasn't was been. A fair and structure. sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And sometimes it isn't. We're obviously trying to change that uh, by coaching. But like Sid said, we, we, we recommend keeping it at 48%. Um, and then allowing the stylists to raise their prices whenever they feel it's necessary. Um, and again, this this is a podcast episode. This is not a coaching. This isn't one-on-one coaching. So obviously, yeah, this conversation is very business. different. We would look at your numbers. We would <laughs> but really break things down. It's about changing the way we think about getting paid. And also for hairdressers out there that think that their salon 
I hate saying it's Laurent, their boss is taking all of their money. I can tell you they're not. It's this, it, it's not hap- it, it Even if they are, they're still, it's still not exactly. enough, right? But when you are in commit, when you're in sales and services and commissions, it's a great way to make money. Mm-hmm. And it's a fair way to make money. Well, when it is done properly, it's, it's done fair properly. and profitable for both parties. Exactly. And that's what's so great. You know, it gives an opportunity. Not everybody wants to run their own business. Not everybody wants to be an independent, but some people want to work for someone else and be in a culture where there is a commission setting, you know, technically. When I do hair, I love, even now, I like going to, like if I go to a salon, you want to work with people. I want to work with people. And I also want all the stuff to be there. I don't want to bring all my own exactly. stuff. Exactly. I don't want to. Some people want that. That's why I hate like when someone's like, commission's not working. Well, it, it could and it can be fair and it can be profitable. And for those people, if, if it's done right, it's so successful. Commission is any other uh, company that does commission, it's not, it's never going to be 48%. The mm-hmm. hair industry is one of the only industries where 48% is what you get. And it's quite a bit. If you do real estate, if you do other things, you're making 10 or 20. If you're an agency, you're making around 10 or 15 25. or 20, 25. 25 is high for an agency. You yeah. Know? So it's like, we as hairdressers are like, 48. I can't believe they're taking 48% or whatever it is. And it's like, we But there's been such, no legal standard. There's been no real standard. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then you have people making the things up. Yeah. And the people that are making things up are- And then it goes viral. They're doing higher commissions, over 50%, because they're afraid of losing their staff. Mm-hmm. But- then they end up losing their business because they can't afford to keep the doors open. We have talked to so many salons that went bankrupt, are in the middle of a bankruptcy, are have are living off of their PPP loans or have taken out business loans just to keep the business open because they were so afraid to lose the business that they gave such a higher commission to their stylist because the stylist said yep. that they refused to raise their prices. So there's a couple things here. You cannot do a fixed uh you cannot do a fixed commission if you're not going to give the stylist the freedom and responsibility of managing their own price point. Mm-hmm. You also cannot just give out a flat commission and you know have all these boundaries and barriers around how they can build their business. The goal of you giving a flat commission is saying, this is what I can offer as a space. The rest is up to you. Mm-hmm. That's that's what the point is. But so many people, so many hair salon owners, it's so stupid to me, will say, you can't raise your prices until you hit a retail goal. Yeah. And it's like, but if they raise their prices, you'll make more, everyone makes more money. That's yeah. the whole point. When we say raise your prices, especially with commission salons, it's not just for the individual. It's the whole company. Everybody. Makes and more money. Not just the whole company, the community as well. Because yes. when you start to set your prices higher in, in an area, everyone else starts to lift up as well. Because... Yep. As much as we want to say no competition, there's always a little bit of competition. I hate that. Good competition. Good competition. Yeah. Like healthy competition. Friendly competition. Friendly. Like, because you will see your peers and you're like, okay, I want to get to that level. And then it keeps growing. And so I think that's the thing. It's like you, one stylist raising a price in a salon is then have, is going to have this ripple effect over the years of everyone internally. And then it's talked about on social and then clients are coming and then they're seeing the growth and then it, you know, it spreads to the other salons. And I think that's how you start to truly change the industry is like setting that up. The other, you know, I, there are people that are listening. I know that they have, let's say they have stylists that have been with them for 20 plus years Mm -hmm. and they, they're like, well, I'll, I can do, you know, I can do that 48%. I can do a flat rate commission for everybody except for, you know, Susie, who's been with me for 20 years. She gets 55%. You cannot do this. You cannot have space. And there are salons that just, they do this naturally where everyone has a different commission rate. You cannot do this. It's unfair. It creates not friendly competition. It creates different types of competition. And it confuses people. How do they have that? What do I need to do? They have less clients than me. I have more clients. I want a bigger commission. It creates room for uh, a negotiation that should never be taking place. Yeah. And seniority is not a reason to make more commission. Seniority is a reason to have a higher price point. Mm -hmm. Um, But even then, you can be somewhere for 25 years and you don't have as many clients as the new kid that just started. I've also seen people be there for 25 years and have never prioritized their education to expand their career. Yeah. So at 25 years in, yeah, you have the experience of the time, 
but you don't have the experience of the talent. And, and some of these people, especially with technology, these these newer stylists are coming in so hot from education because there's so much to keep up on faster. They're watching technology. We're They're not talking learning. about the school. We're talking about the internet. Yeah, the internet. They're learning so quickly. I mean, you can literally think about all the online education that we offer, let alone a technical company, you know, and it's there constantly. So it's just like, if you're not expanding yourself, I don't care how long you've been there. Someone that's been there five years could outshine you in talent and education immensely. Yeah. The goal of that keeping that commission steady is to create an even playing field. Mm -hmm. Everyone here has the same opportunity to earn the same amount. And what can set them apart is them deciding what they're worth. Yeah. Um, but having different commission rates for different people, huge no-no. Um, sliding scales, huge no. Uh, grandfathering people in or seniority, Mm-hmm. Huge no. And then I hear, you know, there's salons out there that do like half commission, half rental. That I mean, that in itself is a disaster waiting to happen. Different standards, different policies, different, different holding people accountable to different things. Different boundaries. Different boundaries. It the goal of coaching with DTH is that we will help you streamline, simplify, and clarify your business. Yeah. We're we we're not saying our way is the best way, but our way is probably the clearest way. It's transparent. It's transparent. Mm-hmm. And I have people that say, you know, my salon can't afford to do 48%, so I need to do lower. That's okay. Work your way up to 48%. Yeah. The, the but goal, everyone does it together. But everyone does it to everyone's everyone's at the same commission together. Yeah. And the goal is to get to 48%. And if you're someone who's paying more than 48%, I do encourage you, and we have coached people down yep. to bring that back down for them. And it, it it's okay. People will not leave. Um, and if they do, I mean... yeah. Do you want someone on your team that doesn't understand what it requires to keep a business open? We've actually worked with multiple salons, but recently we're in um, someone that we've been working with has, they went down in commission because they were giving like 55% commission. Now they're at 48, but everyone hadn't raised their prices in years. Yep. So everyone did a big price raise and well, they've been- Let's pause first. Mm-hmm. So they were giving more commission, but no one was raising their prices. Exactly. The business was losing. Absolutely. And now the stylists are making more money at a lower commission and a higher price point than they were before. The salon is actually stable and getting themselves out of debt. And eventually it's going to start continuing to grow because they're hiring more, they're building more. You know, it's just a beautiful thing. I mean, that's our number one rule. Always be hiring even if you're not hiring. Like, actually, Absolutely. And I, <laughs> I just want to encourage everyone to take a look at your commission. And for those that are doing the 48% or those that are already doing kind of, you know, what we recommend... We're not saying that it's going to be easy. We're also not saying that people aren't going to have an issue with it. But at least then you will have a clear structure of what we. this is what we do. Mm-hmm. This is the consistency. This is the fairness. This is how we run our business. And you'll have a leg to stand on because it's cl- clear. Yeah. But when it's all over the place, you start to feel like you don't know what you're doing because you, you look like you don't. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's because you don't know what you're doing, but or you're setting a standard on based what you saw someone else do in the I community. I think what happens is that hairdresser we bully salon owners and we say, "I want more commission. Oh, this salon's giving more commission. I'm going to go." Like, yeah, there's manipulation and there's bullying. And it's hard, and the salon owner is already trying to make it work. Yeah, and then there are get, toxic salons out there, salon owners out there, but there are also toxic manipulative oh, hairdressers. Yeah, I've I and was I've one seen of, it. I was one of them. I've seen it and I've worked with it. Were you ever one? No. Oh, wow. well, cool, Sid. Yeah, I. It's perfect. Um, <laughs> I think I was a little bit more direct because I feel like when you say that you were that, I feel like that shifted because when I met you, we were ta- we had this conversation about like how I just said I walked into the salon and said this is what I'm charging, and I was so direct. I guess that's what I mean. exactly like. I feel like when you were 17, for sure, because you oh, yeah. you went to hair school so early. But when I met you at when when you were 24. You were like, I remember having this, and I was like, oh my God, I did the same no, thing. No, I was 22. Oh, 22, sorry. And I, you walked in and I was, we had this whole conversation because I was like, I walked in, they're, they had the level system and I said, no, I'm going to be this or I'm going to go find another salon that's going to offer that. And they hired me at that. So like, and I was at a lower commission, but I set my price point. Yeah. Which was great. I'm pretty sure that salon I worked with, it was in Tampa, Florida. It was like 42%. It was a lower commission. They had a sliding scale commission. I didn't have any authority to change that because it wasn't my business. But Yeah. In today's world, people are craving clarity. 
And when we coach, when we coach salons, we try to give them structures for clarity. We don't need we don't need people to follow everything we say, but we just want we want to help people understand. You need to think differently about it. Yeah, we want you to think differently. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Why did you set those prices? Like, I want people to. And a lot of times they try to throw a lot. Well, I did it because of numbers and this and this. And I'm like, you know. And then it comes down to is like, oh, my friend said did the same thing. But also, you know, the math maths. No matter how we do it, it's just that when you make it really confusing, it people lose respect and trust. Yeah. So we really try to help salons get to a place where it's very clear. And, it, and you know it's clear if you can communicate it in a sentence. Mm-hmm. But if you have to explain in a spreadsheet how you pay people, yeah, not a, not a good idea. No more sliding scales, y'all. Next time on Destroy the Hairdresser, the podcast. You all were just talking about interactions talking with clients yeah. in a way that no one in my community was being like honest about. Mm-hmm.